So we're edging closer to round three of the Six Nations. We've had a week off, so it seems literally like an eternity. But we've got some juicy fixtures coming up. I'm especially looking at Ireland and Italy. For fancy reasons, this is going to be a huge game. I think getting your captain and super sub right for this round in particular is going to be so important. And that's exactly why I've made this video. These are actually the best players in fantasy rugby based on average points per game. Obviously, Jack Willis is there, only played one game, so it's a little bit distorted, but you've got the likes of Van der Merwe, Russell, Kalen Doris. So, are they going to be in this video? Well, we'll have to wait and find out. But before we get into the video, 80% of you aren't subscribed to the channel. So, if you can all just go down, hit that subscribe button. Like I always say, we're building a really nice community here, especially for fantasy rugby. So, if you can just subscribe to the channel, that would be so much appreciated. So firstly, I'm going to take you through the five best captain options and then the five best super sub options. And a first, of course, is the best captain option for me, which is Van der Merwe. So obviously picks him for the past two rounds now. The highest average points per game player in the game. So I think that's really solid. Even though we didn't score a try last game, he just made a massive impact against Wales. Carrying ability, offloading ability is really high. So... I think if he's not in your team, I think something's gone wrong. They do have France, which is obviously the only barrier here. However, two years ago when Scotland went to France, they did actually win. So I guess it's a toss up. France have been playing well and Scotland have been playing their best rugby in, I guess, a few years. So it is a toss up. I would have Van der Merwe on my team. Um, but yeah, I guess it just depends on who others pick. For example, Ireland could pick James Lowe and Hugo Keenan, I, I think is a really good option as well. But we all know what Van der Merwe can do, so I think he has to be in your team. I just mentioned him, but second in best captain options is Hugo Keenan. So he's scored some immense points. Man of the match uh, in the first round and almost man of the match in the second round as well. I think he's just one of those solid players. He doesn't do anything overly spectacular, like maybe a Stuart Hogg would, um, but he is just really solid and it suits the game that Ireland want to play. He's also made almost 300 metres just in his last two games as well. So I just think he's a really, really decent option, especially with the way Ireland are playing at the moment. And they also have Italy, right? So it's going to look like maybe a walkthrough for them so I think Keenan Van der Merwe definitely have to be in your teams which one you captain it's going to be tough thirdly is actually Finn Russell so I was debating this one a little bit because going into round two I did have him in my team um, and almost had him on my team for round one however he was never really uh, on my radar for a captain just because I think 10s, yeah, they kick goals, uh, can get a few assists as well, but they don't tend to, I guess, have enough meterage like a Van der Merwe or Hugo Keenan. And like a back row, they don't get line-out steals, they don't get turnovers. So I guess a 10 wasn't really on my captain radar, but obviously Finn Russell scored, what was it, 90 points last weekend. So a massive, massive score. Can he have, I guess, the game or the second half he did against Wales again or even against France? I'm not entirely sure. But look, he does play in France, right? So he knows the play style of some of the players. I don't think he'll have the same game as he did against Wales. However, I think he is still a really good option to have. If you don't want to captain a back three player, then I guess Russell could be a great option there as well. Moving on from, I guess, a risky pick in Russell. Definitely not a risky pick here. This is probably one of the most safest captain picks you could choose. Is Kalen Doris. I would say he's having a breakout season, but I think he has actually been doing this for a few years now, especially for Leinster. He's just so consistent and still so young as well. Carrying ability is amazing. He also gets up in the line out too and also turnovers. But what gets me is he carries on for 80 minutes. So many of you who played last year, this would have been, I guess, like a Gregory Aldry. We'll play 80 minutes, get through so much carrying, almost 20 carries every game. This is Kalen Doris at the moment. 
and I think he, he will probably be on for player of the tournament, especially if Ireland do go on to win. He's already got a try and an assist as well, so it's not just breakdown steals, meters made, carries, it's also the ability to get over the try line and assist as well. So if you're looking for safe options that's going to guarantee to score you big points, then it is definitely Kalen Doris. Another pretty safe pick for captain is obviously Antoine Dupont. I guess why I say they're safe with Kalen Doris and Dupont is because a lot of players will, one, have them in their team, but two, probably also captain them as well. Two of the best players in this year's championship and in the world, to be honest. So probably a safe pick in Dupont. Always gets meters, carries, passes, assists, even tries for France. And they are up against Scotland, so maybe they'll favour their chances. Who knows? Probably not the way they're playing at the moment. They'll just want a solid performance. But look, Dupont was World Player of the Year, right? So he can literally do anything. He's got one man of the match already. Um, well over 150 line uh, meters made as well. Two line breaks, which is pretty good, I guess, for a nine. He just has that ability to, I guess, score loads of points. Being World Player of the Year as well means that the commentators pick him for man of the matches. So another really good option, I guess, for why you might want to pick him as your captain. So those were my five top captain options for round three. Let me know what you think. I think it's probably gone a little bit safe, to be honest, because these players have scored pretty highly in rounds one and two. But I think you also need to take that in consider into consideration. Haven't actually have Keenan in my team for the previous two rounds, so I think I'll be definitely going for him uh, in this round as well. Definitely a captain option for me too. Um, but let me know down in the comments who you think are the best captain options for this week. So now on to best supers of options, and the first one that I've picked is Henry Arundel. So he was my super sub last weekend, which I guess is why he's on this list, but also scored, I think it was like 60 odd points. Wasn't on for very long, I think it was around, what, 12 minutes or so. Only touched the ball once and he scored, which not many players can do, but Arundel seems to have that, I guess, stardom about him. I'd actually really like to see him have a lot more time and also for England to probably stop kicking the ball and give it to their most exciting players like Arundel when they come on and Marcus Smith. So if they do that, I think Arundel's a great option. But against Wales, I see the game being very tight. Um, driver moors, lots of kicking. So will he have chance to get the ball in his hands? I'm not sure. But he could also be that star player who comes on and changes the game. So there's always that option, which is why he's a great option for Super Sub. Second best Super Sub option is Ben Earl. So he was my super sub in round one, played really well actually, came off the bench and carried super well. England will definitely need that on the weekend against Wales. Wales will be definitely up for the fight and I guess in defensive mode a little bit with the stuff that's going on with the WRU, but also their two losses that they've had already in the Six Nations. So I think if Earl can get his dynamism, maybe get into wider channels than carry, I guess, right down the middle I think then that will benefit him a bit more but if he can get the ball on his hands then he's a really good option and he also gets good minutes too being I think like one of the only back row covers on the bench for England next up is Blair Kinghorn before last week I definitely wouldn't have put Blair Kinghorn in best super sub options but the hog came off early he absolutely smashed it had a stormer of a game and also picked up that try later on as well. I think he's probably proved himself enough maybe to start. Um, especially if Hogg isn't fit. But he probably will be. I think it was only a HIA. But if he does start on the bench. Then he has very good reason to come on pretty early. And hopefully change the game against France. Who haven't been the best so far this Six Nations. And as I said before. Scotland are absolutely thriving. So if he can get the ball in his hands in wide channels. He can make assists for Van der Merwe, Darcy Groom, who's back as well, but also get on the end of a try, just like he did against Wales. Let me know what you think down in the comments of Blair Kinghorn, because I saw some of you did actually pick him for your super sub last weekend. 
but please let me know because I think it's still a bit of an if iffy option. But if they do, st- uh, I guess, start to play him and bring him off the bench early, then this could be a great option. So now for one of the strongest options that I believe is Ronan Kelleher. Obviously, he came on pretty early last week for Rob Herring, who essentially got attacked by Winnie Antonio. Dan Sheehan is back, but not sure how fit he is. It's a bit of a borderline pick between Dan Sheehan and Ronan Kelleher because it could be a toss-up between which one is on the bench. But I'm going with Sheehan to start. Not 100%, but then for Kelleher to obviously come on pretty early, get some good carrying ability, also drive and mauls, pick and goes against Italy, who are definitely the weakest side in, in this year's Six Nations. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I think this is probably my go-to at the moment, but let me know who other, which other island player you think is best as well. So my final pick for best super sub option is Makalu. Before the tournament started, I didn't actually know that he does actually play on the wing as well, which to me is pretty crazy. Talk about a hybrid player. He's come off the bench both times in this year's Six Nations and actually played really well. He finds himself in those wide channels, which much like a winger, I guess, but more of a back row to obviously carry the ball rather than try and beat people. He also gets up in the line-out too, so really important for line-out steals, which is part of France's game, which I think is pretty big as well. So against Scotland, that'll definitely be an area of focus, which will be the line-out. I think if he comes on early, he got, I think, brought on for Oldreet in the last game, which was a bit of a strange move. Obviously, Jolange went to eight, but I think they are trialling their back row options. Obviously, McAloo's a great option, Also a great option for Super Sub if he comes on early enough, right? So they're my top five Super Sub options going into round three. Like I said, let me know who you guys are looking at down in the comments. Uh, Look, I probably missed some players. Um, Looking at Ireland, there's probably a few good options to pick from. But I think Kelleher seems, I think, up there um, if he does start on the bench. So, yeah, let me know down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, then please give it a like and yeah, also subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on to never miss a video and I'll see you for team selection for round three.